Hey everybody, John Peterson with J. Peterson Photography. Today I'm going to continue on my series about image editing and talk to you a little bit about how I go about processing an image. Uh, previously I have went through my editing or my, my filtering of photos from a shoot, then actually choosing the particular one I want to edit, then going through and doing an inventory of which edits I want to make. Just as a review, what we recovered earlier is this processing hierarchy. The way I approach an image is I look to make any global edits that affect the entire image. I look to make regional edits that affect um, broad swaths of tonality or colors. And then I'll make targeted edits to fine tune the image, sharpness, little bits of shadow or contrast to help bring a little bit more higher quality to that image. So typically in my workflow, my processing tools, so, you know, everybody's going to tell you what they do is the best or not. Um, there's lots of great programs out there. There is no one right tool. Every software that's out there does a good job. It's really about preference and it's about choosing the right tool for the right job knowing that knowing what you want to do and which tool is going to do the best now in my workflow for editing i use uh, adobe lightroom i generally use that for cataloging and ranking images sometimes i'll make some global adjustments like white balance i use the nix software suite from Define to Viveza, Color Effects, Silver Effects. Uh, this, in this suite, I'll do global, regional, and targeted adjustments. Generally, if I want to do a quick processing job, I will just use NIC. Uh, Photoshop is, is the heavy lifter in my arsenal that I use. I do global, regional, and targeted adjustments. I really do use a lot of layer masks when I'm in Photoshop. And as a plug into Photoshop, I use Tony Kuiper's Luminosity Masks. And these are a really wonderful tool for targeting specific luminosity or tonality ranges and making adjustments, let's say, to uh, uh, the mid ranges. Um, so there's lots of information out there. If you need any more information about Tony Kuiper stuff, let me know. I may do a video of it a little bit later on. I do use the on one perfect resize when I'm resizing images either for print or for my website. And then lastly, I use Helicon Focus when I, whenever I want to do any focus stacking. So let's jump into Lightroom real quick. So here is the image of Emerald Falls that, that we have gone through this process of selecting out of this particular shoot. And it's the one that I want to edit. Now, as I said previously, I don't do a ton of editing in Lightroom, so I will just make some quick adjustments to show you what I do and what could be possible. When we talked about evaluating an image, what, just to remind everybody if you watched that earlier video, the things that really stuck out to me, there's some big dark areas here over on the right at the lower and up in the upper. The back end of this, it's nice, flat, even light, but it doesn't pop. There's no depth. It's very flat back there. Also down here in the lower left, there's some darkness, which isn't bad, but it's, uh, you know, kind of depends on what you want to do, whether you want a really high contrast scene or a little bit more even tonality across the image. And then lastly, the, uh, the water. So the water is on the verge, if not blown out already, but it's right on the edge of being blown out. So I wanna, I wanna kinda knock back the water, I wanna bring out the shadows, I wanna add some contrast, of course I wanna add a little bit of color. Um, and those are kinda some of the basic images that we're gonna do. So first off, you know, when we think about global adjustments, how's the white balance? So over here, you know, well, let's look at our temperature setting. So I can make it cooler. I can make it a little bit warmer. I kind of liked it just about where it was. It was a fairly neutral white balance. This is early spring, so it's neither warm nor cool. It just sort of is in Oregon. So I think I'm going to leave that the same. The other thing that I pay attention to is camera profile corrections. So you can see that there's, uh, there's a little bit of distortion through the camera. And by clicking this, a preloaded profile 
um, what's going to happen is the software is going to try to remove those distortions. So those are kind of the two global adjustments that I do in Lightroom. Next, let's take a look at the water. I kind of want to work on this one first. Lightroom does a great has a great slider called highlights. So if we just start bringing highlights down, ooh, look what that does to the water. Really not even blown out anymore. That's all the way negative. Um, I don't particularly care for this. You know, the beautiful thing about sliders is that just start moving them. See where you like it. You know, I, I want to tone the water down a little bit, but I still want it to be vibrant and poppy. So I don't want to I don't want to knock it down too much. Next is uh, the shadow sliders, another one that I'll use in Lightroom if I'm doing just a real quick edit. So if I watch the shadow areas in the lower right, upper right, you can start to bring out some, some really great detail uh, in some of these shadow areas. The problem with that, it's also lightened the, all the rest of the image, so it's kind of gotten rid of shadows all the way out here which I don't particularly care for. I like a little bit of shadows in the back because that gives depth to the scene. So what I might want to do is just have a little bit of shadow adjustment and then I'm going to go in with a brush and make a targeted adjustment into some of these areas. So if I just brush in some of the areas that I want to adjust and we'll do this up here and I start doing, um, let's do the shadows in this but just in those areas where I brushed I'm gonna bring out some shadow detail and I'm not affecting the rest of the image likewise I think I kinda of wanna target this rock down here just a little bit maybe I'll knock that down just a smidge there we go excellent so there's kinda of my first adjustment let me go back and make another adjustment in the back here this is an area that seems very flat to me, and so I want to, I'm just kind of want to paint this whole entire scene, and, and what I want to do is add some contrast back here. What contrast does is it, it lightens the lights and it darkens the darks, and what, that, what that'll bring you is, is a little bit more depth in a scene, so now it's less flat back there, what I also might do is is pop the uh, pop the exposure just a smidge to kind of bring still bring it up uh, the lightness of it up just a little bit. My darks are darker and my lights are lighter, which is what I like. The next area that I'm looking at is kind of right in here. It's dark, which isn't bad, but it doesn't really pop much for me. So I want to make a quick little adjustment through here. And let's again look at our shadows, maybe pop that up just a smidge, and then we're going to pop up the contrast even more. Oops, sorry about that. We'll do another one here. Let me do this. Sorry, little technical difficulties or operator error. So let's do, um, let's do some shadow adjustment right in that little area. Let's do a little, oop, little, little bit of exposure right in there. The one thing I don't want, or, or the, the, the thing that I want to promote, is I really want the viewer's eyes to make it to the back of the image. And when you have a really dark spot right in the middle of, um, right in the middle of the scene, sometimes that can stop viewer's eyes. So so far, I kind of like what we're doing. The next thing that sort of catches my eye is this little area right in here. And so maybe I want to do a little bit of um, little bit of shadow adjustments right in through here. Again, not have real big heavy weight. Um, I'll bring that up just a smidge and I'll bring contrast up just a smidge. So, let me show you. So this is where we're at so far. This is kind of where we started. And this is where we're at today, so far. Next thing, what I think I want to do is 
make a I, I kind of want to start playing with vibrance and saturation so I don't normally do a lot of these edits in uh, Lightroom I choose to do them in Photoshop or in Nick but in this case let's go ahead and do it so what vibrance is going to do is those pixels that don't have a lot of vibrance uh, it'll add that to it and vibrance can be a really nasty uh, slider if you overcook it like this so let's just add just a little bit of vibrance to this image and then a little bit of saturation so again I went from this to this very subtle edit but those greens are really starting to pop now so that's a really really quick edit that you can do in Lightroom um, in some other wider landscape edits I may use the uh, the neutral the graduated neutral density filter um, I may use a cloning brush to get rid of a few things typically I like to do most of my cloning in uh, Photoshop with a content aware fill but this is just a really quick demonstration and tutorial uh, in Lightroom it's an easy tool to use, very intuitive. Um, if you get the CC version, uh, Adobe's always updating it. And it's just a wonderful, easy tool to both catalog and edit your images. So just as a reminder, you know, we went from a kind of flat image with blown out highlights, not a lot of depth to it, to this image, no blown out highlights, a lot more depth, some better color, better vibrance, and we find it a really easy way for the for the viewer to get all the way to the back of the scene. The next thing you could do if you wanted to was add some clarity. So what clarity is is really sharpening. What clarity also does is it brightens the image because what it does is it adjusts the um, the contrast between pixels. So you can get sharpening, but it also may brighten the image so it just is a bad example let's say I wanted this much clarity in the image because I wanted it super super sharp look what it's done to the brightness throughout the rest of the image so going back to my pyramid when we go down and start making adjustments targeted or regional adjustments we may need to go back up a layer or go back and readjust something that we already adjusted each one of these edits has an impact on previous edits that you've done for for better or for worse so in this case if i wanted that much clarity which i don't um, i would then go back and start start knocking a little bit of the contrast back i would knock some of the lightness back um yeah if this is just not an image that i that i like it at, when it's that sharp so we'll just leave a little bit of clarity to it and call it done then at this point all of your edits have been saved with this image you still have the original file that you can go back to which is which is wonderful so these are all non-destructive um, edits um, if you wanted to export it, we have a great export module out of Lightroom. Um, just resize it, make sure that you're in the right color profile. <coughs> and other than that, real quick and easy image. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And for the next series, I will be jumping into Photoshop. So have a great day and thank you for